Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and I'm Dennis the Buddy Meister. Sorry buddy. Hello? Yes? What are you? You are what? Hi guys. I was totally wasted last night, come on. You can't be serious. It was just talk, you know. What the hell? What the hell's going on? Buddy, I'm a man of honor. You know that. I gambled you away last night. What? Sorry. You... Oh, what? Jimmy! Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and I'm Dennis, the Buddy Meister. And today's movie was once again directly picked for us by one of our awesome Masala Meister tier supporters. Thanks to our patron Vijay Akineni, we got introduced to yet another classic of Indian cinema and arguably one of the greatest Indian filmmakers, Shyam Benegal and his feature film debut Ankur. If you want to choose a movie for us, you can do so by becoming a patron on patreon.com slash Jimmy Cage or a member directly here on YouTube. Ankur or Ankur the Seedling was released in 1974. It was not only the debut of writer-director Shyam Benegal, but also that of both the lead actors, Anand Nag and Shabana Azmi, who are both absolutely fantastic. Ankur won three National Film Awards, second best feature film for Shyam Benegal, best actress for Shabana Azmi, and best actor for Sadhu Meher, who plays a supporting role. Ankur was both a critical and commercial success, and it's a quintessential film of the so-called parallel cinema, which was an Indian film movement that could be understood as an alternative to the mainstream commercial cinema. It was inspired by Italian neorealism with an emphasis on more serious stories, an oftentimes humanistic approach, and an aesthetic that is leaning more towards realism and naturalism. Parallel cinema also a lot of times focuses on marginalized groups, like for example the Dalit caste. And usually there are no songs, no dances, no melodrama. It was initially led by Bengali filmmakers like Sadia Jit Ray, Mrinal Sen and Ritwik Gotok. And indeed, the movies that directly came to mind while watching Ankur were Ray's debut Padre Panchali and Days and Nights in the Forest. Also because of the way the beautiful music by Vandraj Bhatia is used. I have actually already seen a Shyam Benegal film before. The 1982 documentary Sadia Jit Ray, in which he interviewed the master filmmaker about his many great films. He was a blank page for me, but now he is not anymore and I'm so glad that I've seen this movie because it's brilliant. It's brilliantly written and directed and shot. How this complex story about human behavior, change of perception, this expressiveness of a certain attitude and stance is unfolding in this fine and sophisticated way is really impressive. And also how our perception changes. Now in my mind the story itself isn't complex, the characters and their relations are, but let's break everything down. And I also warn you that this review will be more spoiler heavy than our other ones. The movie is almost 50 years old and it's quite difficult to talk about it without going into some details of the story. If you don't want to know anything, just watch the movie and come back. It's a definite recommendation. We have Surya, a young man who reluctantly takes over the administrative responsibilities of a piece of land that his father gave to him. Arriving there, he quite quickly becomes attracted to the servant Lakshmi, who he eventually seduces after her deaf-mute husband Kishtaya disappears. Things become more complicated when Surya's wife Saru moves to the village and Lakshmi confesses her pregnancy to Surya. There are a lot of different things at play here, details that are necessary to know to get the bigger picture. So I'm just gonna list them. First, Lakshmi and Kishtaya belong to the Dalit caste, the lowest caste. Second, Saru is underage when she marries Surya, which means they're not allowed to have sex yet, which leads to frustrations on Surya's side. Third, Surya stresses multiple times that he does not believe in caste. That's why he allows Lakshmi to make him tea and cook him dinner. That again doesn't sit well with the villagers and especially the village priest, who traditionally delivers food to the landlord. Surya exerts his authority the moment he arrives on his land. And he does so with utter strictness. He really uses his power to work off his frustrations. His child marriage, yes, but also the constant bashing by his father, who doesn't think much of him, wears him down. And also, and that's another important aspect for your list, Surya despises the fact that his father has an illegitimate son who owns a piece of land right next to his. Yeah, one of Surya's first actions is to divert the water from their land to his. 
I actually kind of sided with him at the beginning. I could understand all those frustrations and his actions don't seem completely unfounded. I was feeling sympathy for him too. He wants to follow his dreams and his proclamation that he doesn't believe in the caste system when he meets Lakshmi felt nothing but liberating and progressive. But of course he's anything but the hero of this story. He's a complex and extremely flawed character and honestly a horrible scumbag. Although he is openly showing his liberal ideals, he's still seeing himself above others and treats them like his property. Lakshmi is his object of desire and everything's fine, but when she tells him about her pregnancy, he casually demands that she aborts the child. He changes in the blink of an eye and shows his true face in that moment. As the movie progresses, it becomes clear that Shabana Azmi's Lakshmi is the actual character we are feeling sympathy and are rooting for. Benegal sees himself as a feminist and you can feel that in his compassionate and also stirring portrayal of this young woman. Yet it's very interesting and also challenging that almost the entire film is actually told from the perspective of Surya. The story really kicks in when he is forced by his father to move to the village so that he can oversee the land and property they own. It's a fascinating twist that Benegal used. Surya, this initially happy young man from the city who is full of anticipation after his graduation, gets turned upside down when he arrives in the village this timeless place where everything seems to stand still. Of course he adjusts himself well as soon as he realizes that he can do whatever he wants. But it's this place in time that contains and carries the titular seedling for change. A symbolism that arises more than once and in different kinds of ways. Ankur is a really powerful and deep film that tackles several themes in a very delicate and moving fashion. The caste system, feudalism, sexuality, patriarchy, modernism, progression. I think we understood a lot of it, but after reading some articles about the movie, I was just overwhelmed by the level of detail that Benegal utilized. If we take the beginning of the movie, we see Lakshmi as she's praying for fertility. The grass is green, the birds are chirping, everything seems fine, but under Lakshmi's feet is an uneven field of thorns, stone and mortar. A clear foreshadowing of what's to come. Yes, or the way the social gap between Surya and Lakshmi is shown without words. He sits on his chair, she sits on the floor and the long corridor lies in between them. Or when Surya gives the priest a donation with his left hand, not aware that it's done with the right hand. It's so fascinating. And it shows that Surya somehow is like a fish out of water. The same goes for the scene where he is scared to death by a snake and Lakshmi comes to the rescue. Surya can play the big boss as much as he wants, but when it comes to stuff like this, he's nothing but a helpless young boy. Talking about a helpless young boy. How great is the 25 year old Anand Nag in this movie? We have said it many times in the past and with this one it was no different. It's always such a great experience to go back to the beginning of an actor's career of which you have only seen the more recent stuff so far. We've only seen Anand Nag in Godi Bana Satarana Mikatu and Kavaludari. So it was a special pleasure to see him this young and in his very first role. He gives such a powerful, intense and I would even say haunting performance. Absolutely, but Shabana Azmi who also made her acting debut with this movie is in no way inferior. We've seen her in Rai's Shatranj Ke Kilari, but in Ankur her character is much more in the foreground. It's so touching how Lakshmi is telling Surya that her husband is a good man at heart. You can really feel her compassion for him and of course later her overwhelming guilt when he returns. I was especially touched by the husband Kishtaya played by Zadu Meha who as we already mentioned won a national film award for his portrayal. He is a deaf mute which can of course be seen as very symbolic. The lower caste that has no voice and is only pushed around by people of higher social status. Status. But as things come to a head towards the end, Kishtaya is the one who unintentionally generates the climax of the story that ultimately leads to Surya's demise. That's true, it's a real gut punch and it sends shivers down my spine when Lakshmi says, you beat my man, you will be beaten by God. Oh yes, and that moment also contains the symbol of the seedling, the seedling of a rebellion against the upper caste and the social imbalance. Just like the epilogue with the little boy who smashes a window. Or Lakshmi's child, another seedling. Or the two times we literally see a seedling in a pot. All right. Right, enough. What would we say in German about Ankur? Ankur ist ein kraftvoller Film, der sich der Komplexität menschlicher Verhaltensweisen präzise und tiefgründig annähert und dabei die verschiedensten Themen in feinfühliger und ergreifender Manier anpackt. I give Ankur 8 out of 10. It's more like 8.4, but I don't do that. For me it's 9 out of 10. It's more like 8.6, but I don't do that either. Did you know that the German title for Ankur is Tränen auf heißem Sand, which means tears on hot sand? I knew that. Sounds like a terribly schmaltzy, erotic tearjerker. 
So, what are your thoughts about Ankur? Leave a comment and hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox, and also on Patreon, simply at the Jimmy Cage. And you can hit me up on Twitter at the Bodymeister. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like, and make sure you hit that bell for all we have to tell. Mm -hmm.